how cool is it that you were working on bringing back the woolly mammoth? Oh, it's really cool. It's very uncharted scientific territory. Your body contains 37.2 trillion cells, and within each is a copy of a code consisting of more than 20,000 genes and billions of strands of DNA. This code is your genome, and it determines everything that makes you, you. What if you could modify that code, bring back extinct species, eliminate hereditary diseases? That is precisely what molecular engineers and geneticists around the world are working on. Genes are what we get, and we're stuck with them, and the environment is the only thing we can change, and there's kind of a limit to how much you can do. But now, if we can change our genes, too, we're really in much closer to total control of our biology and physiology. George Church is one of many using a revolutionary gene editing technique called CRISPR-Cas9, which allows you to modify DNA sequences. CRISPR is a way that you can design and target a particular part of your genome and change it to something else. Or you can delete a gene. You can make all sorts of edits very precisely. CRISPR is kind of like having the find, delete, replace function for DNA. No one actually invented the process. It happens naturally. Scientists discovered that bacteria alter their DNA to defend against viruses, essentially storing part of a virus so they can identify, target, and attack the virus if it comes back. Researchers realized the tools bacteria used to do this were Cas proteins, nature's genetic scissors. Geneticists are now using these proteins to make their own targeted changes to DNA. Scientists have been messing with genomes for years. So what's the big deal with CRISPR? This is dramatically different. I mean, it's, it's like uh, 10,000 times easier. This can be used in agriculture, where you can change any plant or animal. It can be used to eliminate invasive species. What's most exciting about CRISPR is our ability to alter long-standing epidemics like malaria and HIV. And that could potentially save millions of lives. So here we grow human cells, elephant cells. We can do cloning procedures. It turns out that you can make pretty big things by tweaking small strands of DNA. By making changes to the DNA of the Asian elephant, researchers in Church's lab are working to bring the woolly mammoth back to life. The difference between a woolly mammoth and Asian elephant is actually quite subtle at the DNA level. When am I going to see a woolly mammoth in Jurassic Park? Right, so an actual full woolly mammoth I think is still a few years down the road. We can just change one gene and then the next gene and then soon we have thousands of genes that are changed. The elephant cell will have the exact same DNA sequence as the woolly mammoth cell paint this picture of what the future looks like as a result of CRISPR in your eyes. <laughs> I suppose the wildest description would be that you have some 150-year-old people that look like they're 20-year-old riding on a mammoth. Is that wild enough? <laughs> but CRISPR is not without controversy. If you can make a mammoth, consider what you can do with a person's DNA. This past year, for the first time, scientists in China used CRISPR in an unsuccessful attempt to edit the genomes of human embryos. People fear CRISPR could lead to designer babies. How do we prevent that from happening? We shouldn't be playing, we should be engineering, and I think that's what we are doing. Where do you think the moral and ethical boundary is? Safety. I think safety is number one. Just like any new technology or new drug, we should try to make it as safe as possible. If we don't do anything, then people are definitely going to die of malaria next year. A lot of people are going to die of HIV if we don't do something. If we focus on why it's useful, then that changes the conversation to, you know, what's the alternative? 